Brengun and its sister company Hauler were first established in 2005 and over the last 16 years they have diversified to producing a massive range of products covering many many scales from the minute T and 144 scale agricultural vehicles up to 132nd scale aircraft. These are normally marketed in the Bren gun range. Hauler tends to concentrate on the military vehicles and again includes both kits in all scales from 144th and larger as well as etched brass accessories. The first of the three new releases we have received this month is the TG16A glider. Uh, now this may come as a bit of a surprise as uh, I'm sure even US Air Force fans have not heard of the TG16A glider. I certainly hadn't. The glider is a two-seat training glider used by the United States Air Force Academy for basic cadet training. This type was selected in 2011 as a replacement for the Czech-built L13 and L23 Blanics. In 148 scale, this kit just comes on to runners. Uh, the white one, as can be seen here, has virtually no detail, but that's not really surprising as the original glider also does not have any detail. Uh, there is an etched brass set available which will provide you things like seat belts, uh, and this is because there are different versions of this kit. Uh, say we have the United States Air Force boxing, but the plastic parts are identical. Uh, when you're looking at the civilian vo boxings. The clear parts are flawless as can be seen uh, beautifully optically clear. Also available as an option from the web shop is a set of masks. I would certainly highly recommend them. I've used the Brenga mask before and they do perform faultlessly. The decal sheet supplies markings for four aircraft. All are finished in an overall white scheme. Three of the options have the blue lightning bolt that you can see in the upper left side of this image. And what you can't see, and I have tried to pick it out, is there is a very thin silver outline that surrounds the lightning bolt. And it is silver. It is not just like a printed color. It does have a very, very obvious metallic shine. All of the printing looks first rate and is really, really sharp. Uh, there's a glossy coat over the decals and I have used, again, bring gun decals before and never had a problem with them. Uh, though they do take a little bit of careful handling, I would use plenty of water while you're settling the image down onto the model. Four of the options come from the US Air Force Academy all feature the blue lightning bolt as mentioned earlier. Uh, you do have different tail bands, blue, red and blue with stars, uh, depending on which uh, flight it's assigned to within the squadrons of the training academy. The other bird is a bit of a mystery. It also has the lightning strike, so I hazard to guess it is an academy bird, but this one I believe might be used as a demonstrator because it also has large areas of day glow orange uh, and there appears to be an event or racing number on the tail. Um, so I would imagine that might be assigned to the US Air Force Academy display team, though that isn't actually clear from the instructions. The instructions are very, very clear and simple. I mean, there is not a lot of parts to this kit. I don't even really think you need an instruction manual. I think most will be able to figure it out. Uh, the civilian version of this glider is the DG-1000 that is available as a separate boxing uh, with slightly more colourful markings and the detail set is also marketed as being for the DG-1000 and that does supply you a lot of detail especially the seat belts which will, do need to be added in this scale as well as many other tiny tiny little details which would really make your model stand out. This is a lovely kit, really suitable for all levels. The fit is going to be superb. A test fit shows everything fits flawlessly. So other than the all white scheme and the large quantity of decals, surprisingly for such a small model, uh, that you would uh, anyone would really be able to tackle this. Now moving down to 172nd scale, we have the extra EA300L 330LC aerobatic monoplane. 
This aircraft first flew in 1988 and has been very successful in competition. It's in fact one of the most common aerobatic aircraft around the world. Um, there are numerous versions, different engines, different positions of the wing and single and two seat forms. The version we have here is a two seater and with a more powerful engine. Two marking options are supplied, a yellow and black British example based in Jersey and the same aircraft at two different times in its life. The upper version with the registration ECLTI is when the aircraft was operating in Spain. It later went to Czechoslovakia as OKXTR but the markings remained mainly the same. The most obvious change is the loss of the Spanish flag from the tail and uh, some an extra marking on the rear fuselage. The two grey runners supply all the parts to produce the two seat version of this aircraft. You do also have alternative propeller blades, either three or four bladed. All of the options in the decal sheet are the three bladed type, so make sure you do use the right one. This is pointed out on the instructions. Detail is quite fine and in the cockpit you do have raised uh, sidewall detail. Perfectly adequate for most people I would have thought. The canopy is a bit thick but very very clear. Bren Gun do have an answer for this but more of that later. The decal sheet is beautifully printed. All the markings are in register. The British civil marking includes a very nice representation of the silver colours, which is always a bonus. I believe these decals might have come from Boa. The most complicated scheme, nearly all of it is provided on the decal sheet. Basically you just have to paint the plane red and then overlay with the supplied yellow and blue decals. This is a very small plane and construction is quite simple, uh, taking fewer than 12 steps as can be seen here on the instructions. So the cockpit interior is a little bit spartan, so here is the answer. An etched brass sheet which is available separately from Bren Gun. This supplies all you need to detail that interior, seat belts, cockpit instrument panel and quite a few other bits of uh, nice ad additional parts. If you're going to use this, using the kit canopy might be a bit of a problem because if you positioned it in the closed position, you would get some optical distortion, which would make things a bit harder for the viewer. So, we're going to produce two other things, both designed for the canopy. To the left, you have a set of masks. This is not that major of a deal on the extra, though this is a very inexpensive mask set, so I would invest in it. On the right though we have a clear vac form canopy. Now vac form instantly scares people, uh, no need to, they're really quite easy to work with and it is optically clear which means that you could have the canopy position closed. My suggestion for this is always to insert some play-doh or other children's modelling material into the canopy, very tight, brightly coloured and it clearly shows where you have to cut with a scalpel blade to trim away as well as providing much needed support against damage. Once you have removed the canopy, a little bit of sanding to clean up the edges and straight on with PVA glue. No problem and it does make a big difference to your model. So there you have it, that's Bren Gun's 170 second scale extra aerobatic aircraft. A real typical Bren Gun product and there are at least five to six boxings of this kit so far covering all the variations. All the changes is decals, all the parts are supplied in the box if you want to go freelance. Surprisingly they haven't covered any of the five nations that use this aircraft in the military role as an aerobatic trainer. Uh, that's a bit of a shame because there are some incredibly attractive aerobatic team markings out there for the extra in military service. It's hard to believe now that the first Rutan Quickie flew in the 1970s. Its design then must have been even more unusual to the eye than it is today. I have never seen one of these in real life though. Over 350 were made. Uh, they are a kit aircraft, so supplied in component form using composites, uh, which are then assembled by the builder at home. So basically what we're talking here is a full-size model kit. 
Bren Gun do like the Wu-Tang Quickie. Uh, they have already produced it in both 72nd and 148th scale and have now gone up in size to 132nd. Even in 132nd scale, this is not a large kit. It's actually not that much bigger than the 170 scale extra that we were looking at earlier and it is dwarfed by the glider in 148th scale. The kit itself is made up of just 14 resin parts. These supply everything from the wings, the fuse large. Um, our example, two little parts, the wheels which fit under the wing tips uh, had actually broken off. Uh, so are supplied, as you can see, uh, just next to the wing halves have got the two wheels. So when you open your bag, please be careful. Uh, vac form canopy is provided, which in this scale really shouldn't be much of an issue. If you remember my tip earlier about Play-Doh, works would work brilliantly on this little kit. And here is the main wing casting. Detail is very minimal. Um, realistically, the original plane was a composite, so there was not a lot of detail on it. Um, and here you can also see the position for the main undercarriage, uh, which basically is just in two little fins on either end of the wing. Uh, it is a tail dragger in the true sense of the word because it does have a separate tail wheel mounting. With so few parts, the instruction sheet is actually quite minimal. It takes up just two pages. The first details the construction of the cockpit, while the other is just attach everything else. A small sheet of etched brass provides everything for the cockpit. Uh, so you have seat belts, you have a joystick, and you also have the instrument panel front. Uh, the dials are supplied on a separate photographic film. I'm sure many of you know this already, but a quick tip, paint the back of the film white, and then you will see that the instrument dials actually really pop out. A 132nd scale kit of a relatively obscure type but it's certainly one that will draw the eye due to its unusual layout. In the UK, this is priced around about the £30 mark, so it's not that expensive for a 132nd scale resin kit with photo etched brass included. It is also a very simple build, so I would highly recommend it for anyone who wants to try a 132nd scale resin kit without having to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Because yes, in 30 second scale kit, resin kits now are quite rare and incredibly expensive. Print gun aircraft kits are basic, and but do require everything you need out of the box to make some beautiful models. They are also not afraid of touching subjects that other manufacturers wouldn't dare, which is something I really like about them. Though in this video I've concentrated on the aircraft range, they also do a range of small resin vehicles, as well as an armour range in 135th scale. So let's have a quick look at some of those. So here are two examples from Bren Gun's 144th scale range of vehicles. At the top we have the German A7V World War I tank. Uh, this complements the already released British tanks which has been released over the last two years and feature a number of variations. The Doodle Bug Texaco at the bottom is a tanker that was designed in the early 1930s. About six or seven of these were built. It was a very streamlined shape but was only seven foot tall at its uh, highest point. So very long, very slim. Uh, so not many were seen, and, but there are quite a few in publicity photographs. What is interesting in this is the Texaco on the nose and down the fuselage tank sides are raised, just like the real thing, and you just need to paint the colors onto it. Now this item was from the hauler range, uh, which normally deals with military subjects, as it does here. And this is the Praga LT38 light tank. Where a lot of these were used by the Germans as the Panzerkupfwagen 38T also off A. Um, what makes this unusual is the scale. TT scale is a European modelling scale for railway modellers. Uh, so at 1 1 20th. So it's a bit of a rarity to, to see subjects in this scale in the United Kingdom. Well, that's all, folks. Thank you very much for looking at my quick look at the latest Bren gun releases and I thank them very much for supplying them to us.